want to inject some life, some energy into you. And then you just take off. That's what we're here for. You know, as a woman of faith, as a child of God, as a minister of the word of God, I know that the words that I speak by the grace of God, they are life. And what does life do? It takes people and make them act. It gives action. So that's what we're here. What That's what we are about tonight. Not about beating about the bush, not about wasting your time. So without further ado, I'm just going to start sharing my slides. And we are in for a good time, people. We are in for a good time. You know, when I was preparing my slides, I was so excited because it really took me down memory lane. So I'm going to be sharing from the things that God has taken me through. So they are tried and tested. Okay. And what that will do is it will cut down on your time trying to go in the wrong way that I might have done. So, you know, when I was studying and doing my MBA, one of the things that our lecturers drummed into us is, was you are standing on the shoulders of giants. So every opportunity that you have, just have it at the back of your mind that you're standing on the shoulders of giants. What does that do to you? It helps you to look further than your own ability. Because if you're standing on the sh shoulders of someone who is taller than everybody, then you can see further than if you were standing on your own two feet. And I want to believe that God has imputed in each and every one of us who God has prepared for this platform, for this program, for the three days, that you're going to be standing on shoulders of giants, not because of us, but because God loves you. And God knows that you need this information. You know, the Bible says he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So get ready for a feast of knowledge and inspiration and motivation. If you love what I'm saying, I want you to begin to go into the chat now and just give yourself a round of applause. Congratulate yourself that you're here tonight, okay? All right, so let's get on with the business of tonight. Somebody says super excited. I am glad. I am super excited as well. Hallelujah. Okay, so once again, I want to welcome you. Beatrice had already welcomed every one of us, but for the benefit of those of you who were not here when we started, I want to also give you a very warm welcome to the Business and Personal Growth Summit. Okay, um, Beatrice has done a very fantastic job of reading my bio, so I'm not going to go over that. Um, I don't know, we may be able to give you slides after that so you would have something at least to go home with or to sort of go over when we finish this session. So my topic, what I've been given to talk about is leadership in business growth. Why is leadership key when we want to grow our business? And the aspect that I'm going to be talking about in the arena of leadership, because leadership is a wide topic, but I'm going to be zeroing in on personal leadership, okay? So why is leadership important in business? Number one, leadership is to a business what the head is to a body. Have you ever seen a body without a head? It's not possible. Therefore, your business, you are the head of your business. And our brains, number two, our brains are located in our head. They send instructions to other parts of our bodies to carry out required tasks. That's your role. As a leader of your business, you send instructions. You give instructions. Follow me, I'm going somewhere. It therefore means that if our brains need are not functioning well, if they are not well, if our brains are not functioning well, any defect in the brain will affect the performance of the body part. If you are not functioning well as a leader, your organization will fail. It will collapse. That's why you need to pay attention to yourself. You cannot take people to where you haven't been. 
you will just be giving directions. People will ask you, have you been there? How did it feel? So it means that you as a person, you have to be whole. You have to be whole spirit, soul, and body before you can now expect performance from other parts of your body. Similarly, a business, no matter the size, is as good as its leader or leadership team. I want to tell you something about business that I have discovered. People buy into you first before they buy your product or your service. They want to know, what's your pedigree? What's your history? What guarantees can you give me regarding this service or product? We've listened to Beatrice. We've seen the people that she's worked with. I'm sure just listening to that alone and seeing her pedigree, maybe you were doubting at first. By the time you saw the kind of people she worked with, I'm sure she had grown in your perception of who she was. If you had thought that, okay, let me just come. You look at the kind of people she's working with, you're thinking, oh my goodness, uh -huh, I want her to be in my contact. Perhaps she's even worked with some people you're secretly wondering how you can ever reach them. That's how it works. And that's what personal leadership is all about. Before you step out, what are the things that you have done? Beatrice was telling us her history. She was telling us her journey. She was talking about the things that motivated her, the things that inspired her and gave her the confidence to step out into the arena of business. So that's what we are going to be learning today. So who is a leader? Like Beatrice mentioned, I always like to tell everybody, everyone is a leader. And this is not to, you know, um, uh, what's the word? This is not to tickle you or to make you feel good. No, it is actually the truth. According to the word of God in Genesis, God gave every one of us the mandate to take dominion. So if you're ever looking down on yourself, you need to change that mindset today. You were created to dom dominate. That is God's mandate for you. You were created to dominate. Now, somebody will ask me, if everybody is leading, who is going to be the follower? What you have to understand is there is a space and there is a place and there is time. I'll say that again. There is a space, there is a place, and there is timing. But every one of us, what God has given to each and every one of us is that potential. Now, by the time you discover the purpose of God, there is a process of growth that so every one of us, it's like a seed. That seed has the potential of being a fruit. But until you plant it and it goes through the process of being watered and nurtured and growing into that tree that gives birth to fruit, it will just remain a seed. And so by the time you realize that God has called you, has made you to be a leader, then you begin to ask him, Lord, where is my space? Where have you placed me? What is my timing? And so when we all do that, when we all begin to walk according to the plan and purpose of God for our lives, you will realize that every one of us will fit in nicely. Look at all the planets. They're not hitting each other, are they? Look at all the stars. Is there any accident? That's what we need to discover. That's what we need to know. But everyone is a leader. But I also want you to know that the first person you must lead is yourself. There was something that happened in the book of Genesis. Cain killed his brother. God said to him, before he killed his brother, God said to him, Cain, <laughs> sin is knocking at your door. You better watch out. But what did he do? He ignored the warning and he went ahead. What Cain felt to do was to master his emotions, 
bring them in, into alignment with the will of God and begin to function the way God wanted him to function. But what did he do? Rather than work on the self-awareness that God wanted to give him, he decided to go on his own. That's what we're talking about. He failed to lead himself. Therefore, he came under a car. What we want to do during this session is to let you know that you have the power to lead yourself. Don't ever say, I couldn't help myself. You can help yourself, especially if you're a child of God. The Bible says about the fruit of the spirit. One of the fruit of the spirit, one of the elements of the fruit of the spirit is self-control. You can help yourself. I'll give you an example. This morning, I wanted to take a cup of coffee. And I felt in my heart, God said, no, take the fruit tea. I need you to cut down on this thing. I struggled a bit. In the end, I said, you know what, Lord? I'm not going to argue with you. I poured out that coffee and I had the fruit tea that God wanted me to have. And the peace that I had and the joy. So you can. We have the power to say no. Don't ever think you cannot. You can. Because you have the ability, God-given ability to dominate, to bring and reign in your emotions. And you will see why. A lot of people spend so much money on emotional intelligence. What emotional intelligence is in a nutshell is knowing how to listen to yourself, judge what you're, you are able to accommodate at a given point in time, and also know how to relate with the people around you. That's what emotional intelligence is all about. So you have the power. And why is this important? Because I tell you what, business is not for the faint-hearted. Business is not for the faint-hearted. I was just having a conversation with my son and he's got this business idea. So I said, <laughs> it's good. I love your business idea. But I want you to sit down now and begin to tell me what are the pros and the cons. Have you done your risk analysis? You need to have an informed decision. A thriving business is not just a pie in the sky. So if you are not able to lead yourself and bring your emotions into alignment, you will jump ship at the sight of the slightest storm. Lord bid me to come. He loved the idea of walking on water, but he didn't have the stability of emotion. He buckled under when he saw the contrary wind. That's what we are going to be addressing tonight. Hallelujah. So who is a leader? Everyone is a leader. The first person you must lead is yourself. That brings me to what I call personal leadership. I love the definition that Miles Monroe gave it. He says the best government is self-government. When an in individual is able to lead himself, then he is worthy of emulation. Then he becomes a role model. As a leader in your business, especially small to medium-sized business, everybody will be looking to you. You have to be somebody who is decisive. They cannot be waiting on you for two days. You need to be there like that. You need to make swift decisions, on your feet decisions. It takes somebody who has taken time to understand the business they are going into, the risks that are involved, for you to be able to make decisions in split seconds. That's what you need to be able to do. So. The best government is self. If you're not able to govern yourself, you cannot govern a business. You will remain small. It's not a curve. It is a reality. What this session is doing is to begin to expand you, for you to begin to look at yourself, begin to analyze your ability, begin to analyze where you are right, and ask yourself, I've been thinking of going into business, but do I have the stuff that can actually handle a business. Some of us, we are in love with the idea of having a business. 
But having a business is going from point A to B. But what if, how many of us, we have, those of us who have children, maybe you've read the story of Gruffalo to your children. Three billy goats wanted to cross over to the meadow. But Gruffalo under the bridge. And he will come out and ah, just Goliath and David. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Are you able to cross that bridge? Oops. Okay. What's going on? Can anybody hear me? We can hear you, but we can't see um, Pastor Maureen. Okay, I think she's frozen out. Okay, at least it's not it's not on this side. Um, she would be joining us uh, very soon. But um, I will just kind of recap a few of the things that she was talking about. I'm praying that uh, whatever is the technical issue will be resolved in Jesus' name because what she's sharing is gems. It's just so powerful. And um, okay, so her slides have gone. Let me just um, kind of pin myself for now while I um, dissect what she's, she was saying. So some of the things that I was adjusted down was that in order for you to be a leader, uh, in fact, before I do that, can 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 I have can people tell me what what they've learned so far? I think that's the best way because I, I I was writing my notes and I can rattle that for you. But have you what have we been learning? So can you can you show put your hand up and just let me know what you've been you've you've learned so far, please. Um, if not, I'm going to mention names. And those of you who, whose names I can mention, you know yourself. So please, um, let us hear you. Uh, what have we been learning so far from what uh, Pastor Maureen has been sharing, please? Okay, so Pastor Flo, please. Uh, yes, tell us what you've learned and then followed by uh, Sister Nancy. Thank you, Lady B. We have been called to dominate. Ooh, I like that one. Yes, we have been. You know, that's a very, very powerful statement. And I think that if we would not take anything away from here and just that one alone, I have been called to dominate. When you go to work, you have been called to dominate, not in an arrogant way, but you have been called to dominate. And, and I remember sometimes you go to work and there are some people who are in your way. Just keep uh, affirming this. You have been called to dominate and your domination is going to be you being assertive and being that person that doesn't bring riff, but that actually uh, bring uh, people together. And I, I feel that that is quite powerful. Sister Nancy, what have you learned, please? Thank you. Oh, Pastor Maureen's back. But uh, Sister, Sister Nancy? Um, for me, uh, it's the foundational truth of leadership. He said the first person is, is yourself, knowing how to sort of manage yourself through self-awareness and, of course, and realization of emotional intelligence. So we have the power to lead ourselves, a child of God, and through that fruit of the Holy Spirit, that will help us, which is self-control and um. Of course, she talks about personal relation and personal leadership and the analysis that was dictated by my small room, which means the best government is ourself, is self-government. And I think this is a very, very, very good topic for me. Uh, Absolutely. Love it. Thank you. Love it. Yes. We have to learn to manage ourselves. And you know, without I mean, this is it's our community, so I can say this without being um biased. I feel that for us from Africa, this issue of being able to manage ourselves, our emotions is a big thing because most of us were not trained to communicate. And for that reason, we've bottled things so much so that even being able to just stay grounded when the floor is shifting, is a big problem for us. So, uh, of course, uh, Pastor Maureen is back and I will hand over the mic to her. I will put her, um, see if, Pastor Maureen, nice to have you back. 
I'm yes, I know. Be... I am so sorry. My internet just went. <laughs> you know I what? I can't believe it. The I internet just say, went. <laughs> I always say the devil is a liar. I'm telling you. Look, when it comes when to When it was getting things, really juicy. <laughs> when it comes to these things, the devil will always try us. Yes, I I'll just this. go back to the slide. <laughs> yes, I'm just going to take myself off the, uh, remove the pin so that you can uh, carry on. I have given you the uh, shared uh, All right. Thank you. Yes, yeah. No, the devil is a liar. I, I, you go on then. You know what? I attended this, uh, one of the ladies I follow online, Patrice Washington, and she's also a Christian lady. She was doing this event. And then um, at some point she said she couldn't speak. Wow. She was like, she was so speaking to people's spirits to the point that she she just, she just couldn't. She, just she started couldn't. coughing. Wow. And then she just said, you know what, guys, I pray for me. And then <laughs> some people had to take over to just pray for her yeah. until she was able to get her composure. And she said, um, you know, the devil is always in the way when we yeah. are ready to yeah. listen well, to no, impactful well, information. Right. Of course, um, <laughs> thank God you are back and uh, yeah. take over all <laughs> So I'm just going to go into the three Ds of effective personal leadership. Thank yes. you, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for um, still being with us. I, and I'm just going to wrap up very quickly so that um, we don't take too much of our time. So the first one is the decision-making time. If you remember, I was saying that people buy into you first before they buy your service, before they buy your product. And I, I found a very interesting, definition of decision of decision it says is the act or process of deciding based on available information or data secondly a conclusion or resolution reached especially as to future action why decision very important as a leader it's not only about making decisions about your business. The thing is, why are you going into business in the first instance? Remember, I gave an example of my son. The assignment I gave to him was, do you understand the market? Where are you going to get your resources from? How? Are, what's the vehicle by which you're going to transmit these resources? Like I mentioned earlier, some of us are in love with the idea of business. But what we need to do and what we need to know is there is a lot of work that needs to be done. So you may be in love with a particular idea, but you have to do your information gathering. You need to do your research before you come to an informed decision. And what do we have at the bottom of our triangle? We have data. We have information. Your decision making must be based on your data and information. Collect data. What does my data tell me? I love to sell snow to Eskimos. But what does my data tell me? Snow is not the right product to sell to Eskimos because they have it in abundance. So you now don't say, but... It's so easy for me to get snow and it's comfortable and it's convenient. No. The first thing you need to know when you are going into any kind of business is you need to collect data. Do your research. Don't go blindly into a business without doing your research. That is why if you go to a bank to borrow money to do your business, the first thing they're going to ask you is, where's your business plan? They're going to ask you, what's your business plan? It is common knowledge that only 5% of businesses survive the first five years of coming into existence. You don't want to fulfill that kind of prophecy. You don't want to be part of that statistic that didn't make it. This is part of personal leadership. How are you? Because if you don't get yourself together and get yourself, get your brain out of the cloud, 
into reality, you're going to make a shipwreck of that dream. Dreams are good, but you need to sift it. You need data. You need information that will lead you to your decision. And that will take you on the trajectory of success. Why is decision making important? You and your business exist in an ecosystem, not in isolation. What you are going to sell, the service you are going to provide is not in isolation. We are interdependent as humans. If I sell you plantain, you probably want to go and, you know, maybe grill it and sell it or eat it. So, you know, it's Transferring from one person to the other. What's your role in all of that? Your business exists in an ecosystem. Therefore, the decisions you make will impact you and impact your environment at large. So you want to know what's going on. You will have to know how to manage your resources effectively and efficiently. Talking about personal leadership, that's what it's all about. These are all the things that you need to know before you embark on business. Life is about choices. And as a leader or a business owner, you want to work on and sharpen your decision-making skills. And the best practice is before you even venture into that business, start to learn how to work with data, with information. So that by the time you are establishing your business, somebody will not just come with a big idea, in quote, and you fall for it. If you have trained yourself to research and analyze, then it will be very difficult for somebody to scam you down the line because you have trained yourself to always check if these things are so. Okay? Let me go swiftly because of time. Tips on effective decision making. These are the, make a note of them. Write them down if you will. Take a photograph of this. Number one, identify the decision you want to make. I love it when Beatrice was sharing with us. And she said, from her research, she decided she wanted to be a marketer. She could have decided to do something else. But she researched. She went on courses. That's leading herself. And that's why by the time she was able to make concrete and specific decisions, she's now able to help other people to come to that place where they can decide specifically what they want to go into. That's what we're talking about. Collect relevant information. So you need to begin to ask yourself, um, do I even know the decision that I want to make? Am I, do I have clarity on what I want to do? Where can I get relevant information? Do you want to go to the library? Do you want to ask people around? He saw Secret Millionaire. He saw that woman. She thought, oh, that's part of the data she was collecting that gave her the kick in the back to embark on her dream. Identify available options. I always say to my children, there are many ways to get to Croydon. And just using Croydon as an example. You can either take the bus, you can take the train. If you have a helicopter, you can fly your helicopter there. You have to ask yourself, what is the best form of transportation within the time that I have? If you have two hours, you can decide, you know what? I have two hours to kill, so I will take the bus. Because we know the bus is probably the longest journey. I don't have time. It means I have to invest in taking the train. Why? Because train is more expensive. There's no parking. That has eliminated car. What I'm trying to tell you is, these are the ways, this is the process of decision making. You don't just wake up and say, this is what I want to do. No! You have to gather information. Identify available options. Evaluate the evidence. Now the evidence is before you. There is a car. You can either go by car, rail, um, underground, but evaluate. Like I said, is it two hours? If I have two hours, then I can afford the bus. <laughs> Three, I don't have two hours. I only have 30 minutes. Uber. Okay? Learn this. Learn to evaluate the evidence. Then choose the best option. 
Then next, take action. Then you review your decision. Just the fact that you have reached that decision, you need to go back again and say, is this still working for me? Personal leadership. Just imagine if you are running your business and you left this to your assistants to be doing. One day she will take that business away from you before you know it. Mm. How many of us watch has watched this with an old film called Pretty Woman? Not Pretty Woman, is it Pretty? No, Working Girl. That was what happened to the boss. She left everything to her secretary. Then one day she couldn't make the, the, the meeting and the secretary went in her place. And that's how the secretary got the contract that she should have gotten because she didn't bother to lead herself. Personal leadership was, was lacking. The next D is determination. Very swiftly, this is the Collins Dictionary. It says determination is the quality that you show when you have decided to do something and you will not let anything stop you. Now, all of us, in fact, I'm sure every one of us here we have advised ourselves and so many people, don't quit, don't give up. Easier said than done. Easier said than done. Easier, look, the first slide that I made for this meeting, do you want to know? I don't know where that folder, the folder disappeared, I'm telling you. I woke up, the funny thing was, when I finished, I went and I danced with, to my husband. I said, I'm finished my slide. You know, this was like a week before. This was how fired up I was because I'm such a busy person and I have my own program coming up. So I wanted to get everything out of the way so I can, you know, I like being organized. I had danced to my other, ah, I finished my slide. Imagine the following day, I said, okay, let me come and dress it up, give it some jazz. Lo and behold, there was no folder. Called him, my husband. My husband went late to work that day because he was, up till today is a mystery. What did I have to do? I told myself, I said, I'm going to shed a few tears just to relieve my stress. But I got back and I said, God, it has to be bigger and better than what I had done before. Yes, I am proud to announce to you it was bigger and better. That's what you are looking at today. Hallelujah. It takes determination. I had to bounce back immediately. I didn't have the luxury of having a pity party. Zig Ziglar, many of us know him. He says, I believe success is achieved by ordinary people with extraordinary determination. What I want to um, encourage us with is, we have the Holy Spirit. He's our encourager. I'm going to go to the next slide. I'm sure Beatrice is going to make this. I don't mind sharing it. So I'm sure she's going to make it available for people. Okay, so you're, you're going to read. So I'm just going to touch on very, very briefly because I'm aware of the time. Okay, determination in practice. This story is about fried chicken Kentucky or Kentucky fried chicken. Many of us have heard his story. One of the things that always, you know, even when I'm feeling down, when I remember that this man, it was at age 65, that he came into a realization that you know what? My life needs to change. I said, I, I, I'm not 65. I'm not even 60 yet. Eh? It's all, next year, I'll be 60. So I, I can enjoy 50s. I, I'm still calling myself 50s. You know? I said, this man, at 65. What? So why should I feel like my time is gone? I'm just starting. If he, at age 65, broke and penniless, began his journey into what we have today, then, oh boy, you and I have just started this journey. So I want to encourage somebody. It's not over. It's not over. You can begin again. And I've got here 10 real life examples. Because of time, I won't go into each one of them. But I'm sure we we know about Oprah Winfrey. I will read about J.K. Rowling for us. The author had her famous novel, Harry Potter, rejected by 14 different publishers before finally having it accepted. 14. Imagine if she gave up on the 13th time. That's what we are talking about. Moving on very swiftly. What are the signs that you are a determined person? This one is self-check now. Ask yourself, do I have these qualities? Number one, the ability to maintain focus. Do you get easily distracted? 
the next big idea, the next big idea, the next big idea. They are doing, um, they are selling clothes. You are there. You are, look, there is nothing wrong. I am multi-talented and I have come to be at peace with, but whatever I, I go into is because I have done the research. I'm not going into it blindly. So yes, God gave some people five talents. So you can be like that. But what I'm saying is you are not the person that you just chalk one and go after another one without establishing one first. That's what I'm talking about. Do you have good work ethic? It's not, ah, it's snowing. I can't come and kill myself. <sighs> Having good work ethic means come rain, come sunshine. You are doing it. My husband said to me, <laughs> my husband said to me, he said, you are busier than those of us who are going to nine to five now. <laughs> I, I wake up very early. I have to see to business. So you have to have good work ethic. One of the things I remember when I was even growing up, one of the things like we used to, you know, it was my mom. I think it was my mom that first said it. There's a tribe. Look, I'm Nigerian. There's, there are, you know, there are three main tribes in Nigeria, Yoruba, Igbo, and Hausa. Now the Igbos, they are people who delay gratification. They will have millions, but they will still be wearing Sometimes ragged t-shirts. We see their equivalent here. All those people with beauty shops in um, Peckham and Brixton. If my husband was telling me the day he saw the car of one of the people that we, one of our suppliers, he said he opened his mouth. If you saw the car he was driving, but when you see him in his store, you would not even believe. Because he and my husband are kind of close now, there are things that he's told him that my husband would be like, wow. But if you see him, you will just think, if you walk past him, you will almost even just ignore him, not knowing what he's sitting on. Are you able to delay gratification? Or are you like, oh, I've made my first million, I need to splash. That's when you need to take root and establish. That's not the time to splash. Money has wings. Are you resilient? Being able to be resilient. So some of us here, Begin to ask yourself, which one do I fall into? Uh, do I have these qualities or do I need to begin to work on them? That's the essence of bringing this out to us. You ask yourself, am I open to change? Or even though the data is telling me something, I'm like, no, 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 no. This is what I know how to do. Retrain, if you have to retrain. That's what Beatrice did. Oh, when she said when she was young, since when she was young, she wanted to be a nun. Then she realized it's not working. What did she do? What did she do rather? She retrained and changed course. That's what you need to do. This is part of personal leadership. Are you able to lead yourself to where you ought to be? Going to the next slide. Don't worry, we will make this available to you. Mm -hmm. I'm very conscious of time. I don't want to waste our time. This, the, the last D is dis discipline. Sorry, I've got braces. So sometimes... <laughs> My words don't come out properly. And of course, I'm so excited that, you know, definition of discipline, the ability to keep working at something that is difficult. You know, like I said, do you have good work ethic? Or do you think, ah, when I wanted to sell this thing, you know, the business was lucrative, but now, hmm, seriously? Is that what is going on? Or is it that, you just don't have the stickability. You have to ask yourself, are you jumping sheep at the first sight of opposition, of difficulty? These are the things that will help you thrive and to thrive in your personal business. And I've got a few quotations here that you will be reading later on. What are the benefits of self-discipline? It helps to increase your inner strength. There's a popular, there's a, not popular, there's a prayer I love to, I get from the Bible. And I pray that God, you will strengthen me in the inner man with might by the Holy Spirit. We need inner strength. Something that kicks in when there is opposition. That's what kicked in when David saw Goliath. Everybody, can you imagine? Soldiers with big muscle were trembling. This little boy said, no way. I've seen God do mighty things in the outback when I'm looking after sheep. 
who is this circumcised Philistine? You must come down. These are the benefits of self-discipline. David is a very good example of somebody who has led himself, personal leadership. He took care of business when nobody was there. He had built that inner strength and confidence in God. So when the, the, the op major opposition came, he was able to overcome. Somebody give me some love, even on this chat right now, for being blessed. It enhances your approach, your attitude to life. That's what self-discipline does. It transforms a dreamer into a doer. Everybody can dream more. Oh, everybody dreams. Not everybody do. Not everyone will act. Not everyone will take action. David had the potential. He could have said, you know what? This is not my battle. I'm turning back. But he took action. We are almost there. This is my last slide. Tips on building self-discipline. So, you know, you will notice that what I have done here is not just telling you you don't have this. We are also giving you solution. We are telling you this is the way to do it. Tips on building self-discipline. Start small. Rome was not built in a day. Establish your presence first. You may have two, three business ideas. Establish one first. Remember what I did when we were going to start. People buy into you before buying your products and services. So if you establish yourself very well, properly, you'll be able to branch out into other segments, into other branches, because you have established your presence. We all look at Virgin. Virgin did not start a uh, flight train at the same time. He started with HMV. He started with something small. Even Dyson today, they've gone into hair dryer, they've gone into everything. What did they start with? Uh, Hoover. What do you call it? Vacuum um... <laughs> cleaner. Uh -huh. That's what he started with. Vacuum cleaner. Then he went to hand dryer. Went to, he was using the replicable idea. So start small. Don't say I'm going to conquer my before the, the people conquered Mount Everest. They started with small, small hills and mountains. Then they grew to say, okay, we, we will raise the bar. Eliminate bad habits. Develop good ones. I always say to my children: if you don't exercise yourself in obedience in little things, the day when you need to be obedient in a big thing, you will not have the inner strength to do so. Start small. Life is about obeying instruction. I always say to my children, if you don't learn to obey your parents, when you go out, you won't obey your teacher. You won't obey your boss when you get to work. And what will happen? <laughs> it's true. You start small. That's why God has placed family to learn social skills at home, in the safety of your home. So that once now you have developed good habits, you are then going, that's why they say charity begins at home. Exercise regularly. The, even the Bible says um, physical exercise profits little. That little that uh, has profit, take it. Try to walk. Even if, if it's three times a day. Even if it's just around the block. One day you will tell yourself, I need to go further. Establish a specific goal setting process. Start small. You, you may wake up in a day and say, okay, I have three tasks. At least one I must complete. Don't stress yourself. Step out of your comfort zone. Love change. Limit social media and junk food. Mm. I won't say any more than that. I will leave that. Practice self-awareness. Learn to listen to your body. You know, when I, when I feel tired, I just put everything down. Everything. I put it down. And I go and rest. I listen to my body a lot. Don't overstretch yourself. That's what is causing some mental imbalance for some. And it manifests sometimes even in the body. Uh, use apps and tools. You know, I'm so glad that Beatrice has somebody who's going to encourage us to use, to be techie. You know, some of us are intimidated by tech. We thank God some of us who have overcome. 
the other day I was doing some design. My husband said, ah, ah, hey. I said, yeah. So because my husband actually does a lot of my, he does a lot of my graphic. But watching him and whatever has encouraged me and challenged me to, you know. So sometimes I would do something in my husband say, ah, ah, hey, you are not bad. I said, hey, I'm catching up. <laughs> The first time I saw a computer, I was 26 years old. Can you imagine? Thank God I came to England. Eh? I'm sure some of you can be a witness with me if you grew up in Nigeria. We didn't have computer. I went for a computer training and I pressed one key. Everything disappeared. <laughs> You should have seen me that day. Mm -hmm. Thank God for one of my younger friends. He was the one who helped me that day. <laughs> I said, oh, I thought I'd lost it, you know. <laughs> when I was doing my MBA and I was doing my dissertation, again, something, ah, you should have seen me when I went to the office. I said, you must get <laughs> project that I've been working on, you know. So I thank God. Thank you very much, because you will deliver some of us who are still fighting this battle we take. Hallelujah. Then Thank use you. affirmation, affirm yourself. You know, I told us from the beginning that we have been made to dominate. I want us now to mute. Appreciation. I want to thank everybody for attending the Business and Personal Growth Summit. These are all my, you know, um, connection links. You know, by the time you get the slide, you'll be able to, um, you know, connect with me if you want to. Now, I want to finish on this note. I want us to say some affirmations, to affirm ourselves today, okay? So I want you to unmute, please. Um, Beatrice, please, do we have your permission to unmute very briefly? Sure, and yeah, just, yeah, and yeah. Just affirm ourselves. Yes, yes. Okay? So the first affirmation is, I am made to dominate. I am made to dominate. Don't say it like you mean it. Why are you? I am a leader. I am a leader. I am an influencer. I am an influencer. I am made to win. I am made to win. I have the ability to be at the top of my game. I have the ability to be at the top of my game. Let's say that again, please. Because after this conference, I want to hear, I want to hear stories, testimony. I am able to get to the top of my game. I am able to get to the top of my game. Amen. 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 Thank you for this opportunity to share with the people of God. And thank you, listeners, for today. I hand over to you, Beatrice. God bless. Thank you. For wow, wow, wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. That was okay. So, can everybody mute themselves, please? I will appreciate it so much. Can you meet yourself, please, so that we can uh, we can carry on uh, having the last speaker is coming on shortly. But I just want to acknowledge this great woman of God. I just want to acknowledge this great leader who has poured her heart. Uh, obviously, if we if today if she was to speak just her today, I'm sure the time would have still been worth it. Of course. Um, we still have another another speaker coming, uh, but what we have heard today is incredible. And I just want to touch on this one thing about the discipline, because for me, it is the discipline by far that is what will get us to the other components. Great. But when you don't have the discipline, the determination, guess what? Nothing is going to happen because what I want to the example that I when as she was talking that came to my mind is those of footballers. You know, most of us will say, "Oh, football, they they are paid so much." Do you know how many hours they train a day? Do you know the cold that they are in every day? Winter, cold, they are running, snow, rain, whatever they are in it. You see, but some of us. What do we do? I'm tired. I'm tired every day. You see, I think 
Apart from what we have said about the affirmation, the other affirmation or vocabulary that we should take out of our speaking is I'm tired. Don't don't just mention that word. Like anytime you think about I'm you feel that you you're feeling tired, tell yourself I am a winner. Replace that. Because like until we kind of build that resilience in ourselves is going to be challenging. Thank you so much for that. I will give you permission to ask questions shortly. 